Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel again. Uh, we have seen the binary phase shift king and the QPSK. In this lecture, we would like to generalize. So we are looking at MPSK. It should be simple because it's direct extension of binary and uh, quad quadrature QPSK. So the MRE phase shift king is two dimensional, which means N equal to two. We have two bases. M represent the number of signal points and those signal points are equally spaced and they are on a circle. The circle has a radius of square root of E. The distance is square root of E, so the energy would be E. So the circle is centered at the origin. We can look at the angle between different uh, symbols. In MREP is K, the phase carrier can take one out of capital M symbols. The two by is divided by M. We have a circle which is 2 by, and we divide it by m to have m symbols. And of course, this is just a counter. For example, when i equal to 1, this would be 0, and we'll start with angle 0, and so on. Now, if you look at QPSK, or binary phase shift king, should be just a direct example of what we are doing here. It's just a special case. The transmitted signal will be or can be represented as square root of 2e over t times cosine at that carrier frequency with a proper shift. Remember that e is the signal energy per symbol, and that capital T is the symbol duration, and the carrier frequency is or have to be integer multiples of 1 over t. The signal can be written as either 1 cosine, or we can have the M phase component and the quadrature component. So this shows the projection on cosine and sine. We are using the orthonormal basis where we have the cosine normalized and the sine normalized. So we have two bases. Note that in some textbooks, there might be some differences in the sign of the basis and you might notice there is minus, minus sign here. So there is more than one possible option. We're taking the simple one. The signal projection on the orthonormal basis, if you want to get the projection, you can take the signal and multiply it by the basis and integrate. So we have projection uh, to get these quantities here, the cosine and the sine. It depend, the projection, of course, will depend on the angle. We can summarize this. We can summarize the MRE phase shift king example with the following table, where this shows the multiple of the angle, and here we have the x and the y coordinate. So, for example, if somebody asks you to sketch the 8 PSK, we can have the following diagram. It's a circle. We divide the angles, and we have eight different symbols distributed equally on a circle. If you want to sketch the decision region, of course, you have to draw a line between them, and then a bisector that divides, that's, ver that's perpendicular to this in the middle. That's to define the region. That is, uh, if you use minimum distance decoding, then anything fall in this region would be decoded as M1. For the case of 16, of course, it will be, it look like a bit more crowded. And I'm just showing here one example. When it comes to the error probability analysis, uh, although I'm showing here the case of 8, but you can, we will we'll try to generalize. So if you look at the average error probability for a symbol on MPSK, it can be approximated with the union bound which is recalled here. So all we need to know is the distance between the signal constellation points, and we need to sum over. So if you, for example, start with this signal, you will do error if you are here, if you if you mistake this with, with M2, or M3, or M4, and so on. So we can represent this point as a vector in green. So this is S1. And the closest two points where we can do mistakes is S2 or SM. These are the nearest two ones. Assuming, of course, this is the closest two distances. These are far, and the probability will become less. Especially if, if the E, the signal to energy, or signal to noise ratio is, is relatively large, because the signal is strong, and there is less probability of, of going away. The angle formed by between S1 and S2, the angle here is 2 by divided by M, so the angle is 2 by divided by m. This is by over m, but from here to here, it will be 2 by divided by m. Now, the decision boundaries, z1 and z2, are, are shown. And the Euclidean distance 
between point S1 and S2, we can find it using geometry, and we know that this angle is 2 pi over m, so this distance from here to here is 2 times square root of e, so from here to here we can find it as square root of e times sine of pi over m, this is a uh, right angle triangle, so this guy is square root of e times sine pi over m, and we have double the distance here, and we have factor of 2. This distance is the same. We need this distance now in brown to substitute back and get the probability of error. So this is the distances that we have just found, just to match the color. Now, I'm recalling these distances. I'm starting to substitute now. Recall that I will not take the summation from 1 to 8 or from 1 to capital M. We'll just take the two closest ones, and we have an approximate sign here. So uh, just replace these two with the equivalence here. So if you put the 2 will cancel with the 2, and then we have square root of e over n naught sine by over m. You can take your time, take this expression, substitute here and here, and you get, of course, if you add the two halves, you get the same expression. So this is our bound. The average point of symbol error for MPSK is approximately, if we ignore the remaining, we can approximate it as uh, the error function given by the following expression. It's not exact, so uh, it's an approximate, and this approximation becomes more accurate as we have higher E over N naught, as the signal energy becomes stronger and we have less probability of error, of course, for a given M. For example, if you take this expression and you try to substitute for the case of M equal to 4, remember that we had this expression for the case of M equal to 4, and we... Um, Let's try to, uh, if you put sine by over 4 is 1 over square root of 2, and you, this expression will become the same expression we had before. And th this is kind of check that we have done things correctly. The average symbol error rate for the case of m equal to 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, you can see it in the diagram here. And this is one of the books, this is maybe more accurate. But I tried to uh, just implement this or uh, execute this in MATLAB and get the plot. So in that case, I got the following plot. There is some similarity here. This is more accurate. But if you use the approximation, then remember that for the case of binary and quaternary, the two will be matching. So there's another curve below here, which is the blue curve, but it's not shown. I would advise you very strongly to try to regenerate this curve using MATLAB. Now, in addition to the probability of error, in addition to the probability of error, we need to know what is the price paid in terms of bandwidth. So remember for the symbol duration of t, as we increase m, the relation between the symbol duration and the bit duration is given by the following expression. So capital T, the time for the symbol, equal to small t, or t sub b for the bit, and it's scaled by log m to base 2. Now let's say that we're using... Uh, a pulse which has like sync and then the spectrum uh, square let's say you're using square waves and the spectrum becomes sync and the power spectral density becomes sync square so this is kind of sync square i would like you to know that the spectrum for mpsk will be adjusted the amplitude will change and also the spacing and the nulls will be different so the blue curve here for the case of m equal to 2 for the case, for the same case of data rate, for the same case of duration, then what you get is less bandwidth requirement, and that's clearly stated here. You can see that as we increase m, the bandwidth requirement for given rate becomes less and less. You can, I, I'm just sharing, I'm just sharing the code here. You can copy and paste this into MATLAB or or Octave and reproduce the same figure here. Remember that the bandwidth here is infinity, but usually we talk about the null to null bandwidth. What is the null? The null is where the frequency or the PSD is equal to zero. Let's look at this, for example. It's kind of sketching sync square. The bandwidth, if you continue, it will take forever. So usually we discuss the main lob, the first lob. So we call the bandwidth is the main lob bandwidth, so or the null to null bandwidth. For the case of MPSK, the null to null bandwidth will be 2 over T. So the bandwidth requirement is 2 divided by t. We need this 
in the next slide i would like to, i would like to look at the power spectral efficiency as function of capital m what happens if we increase capital m so remember this equation this is the bandwidth the null to null bandwidth for the case of the uh, for the case of mpsk and we're assuming we're sending square wave so uh, if you look at the bit rate the data rate rb my objective is to see how much bit rate we have relative to bandwidth i want to find rb relative to the required bandwidth remember that rb and the time duration are inversely related or of course tb is also related to capital t of symbol by a factor of log m to base 2 we can also reverse the equation write t in terms of that now i will take t and of course tb and substitute there to um, to see what we get here remember that this is the bandwidth i color this in, 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 in red i am now replacing t with its equivalent tb so i got this expression here and I am now uh, replacing TB with one of our RB, which is shown here. So now we can have B and RB in the same equation. So if you solve for that, you get RB divided by B, you get log 2M over 2. What is RB over B? It's by definition the bandwidth efficiency. It's how much data rate, how much bits per second per hertz. So that becomes log of base M, log of M to base 2 divided by 2. So if m equal to 2, we have 1 half. If m equal to 4, then we have 1. So there is a direct relation with capital M as we increase. So the bandwidth efficiency, if you want to try some numbers example, I'll use the same expression. For 2, it's 0 0.5, 4. This is just direct substitution in the equation that we had before. And as the number of m increases, the bandwidth efficiency increases. So m -I -E, is really bandwidth efficient so the logical question would be what is the expense for improvement and bandwidth efficiency what is the price paid in mfsk in mpsk i'll give you a short answer here but i'd like you also to recall that we can look at it a different ways if we fix the eb over if we fix the signal to noise ratio or the power then the price would be error uh, performance would be reduced I would like to think about it in a different way. What if we fix the power? And I'd like you to think about MRE, uh, MPSK in general. So please leave your comments in the comment section. I'd like you also to remember the main equations, main conclusions that we had, and that they are kind of approximate. See you in coming videos where we cover uh, other types of modulation.